On this channel, I kind of like to go through the best of the best of the studies that relate to height increase. This study has potential applications of how to increase height in the torso, which is important to a lot of people for proportionality, especially considering there's no surgery at this point to increase the height in the torso. Um, the paper is called Height Increase. Uh, we see that word right there. Neuromuscular function and back pain during six degrees head down tilt with traction. Spinal lengthening are, is commonly experienced by ast astronauts exposed to microgravity. Um, in a, a lot of height increase literature on the internet, it's, it, everyone points out that astronauts are three inches taller after space. To develop a ground-based stimulation for spinal adapt adaptation to microgravity, we investigated height increase. So this means stimulation. So there may be a way to stimulate that three inch height increase that astronauts undergo. Six subjects, all of whom underwent two forms of bed rest for three days. One form consisted of six degrees of head down tilt with balance traction, while the other was horizontal bed rest. Subjects had a two week recovery period in between the studies. Total body and spinal length increased significantly more, and the subjects had significantly more back pain with balance tr traction compared to ho horizontal bed rest. The distance between the lower implant of L4 and upper implant of S1 increased significantly in both treatments to the same degree. Intermuscular pressures in the erector spinal muscle and ankle torse torque measurements during plantar flexion and dorsiflexion did not change significantly during e e either treatment. Head down tilt with balanced traction may be a better method to stimulate changes of total body and sp spinal length as well as back pain seen in microgravity. So this may be a way to increase height more than people typically see after getting out of bed. Most people are a little bit taller after getting at, sleeping at night. So, but the problem is that um, with any sort of inversion, which head down tilt is that, you know, there's, there's some negative side effects that it would likely harder to sleep. And you, 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 there may be some negative side effects to the brain, but um, I, I still, I don't know if it's, it's, it would be possible to sleep in this position safely, but um, this is still a really, really interesting study. The absence of, absence of normal weight forces and alteration of muscle forces on spinal sp structures increases body height four centimeters or more in microgravity. Four centimeters or more, that's less than two inches, that, but that's very highly significant in, in terms of proportionality in the torso. You know, the, the torso is usually like three feet, um, two inches, um, you know, that's not quite 10%, but that's maybe 5%, but that's still pretty significant and it would be very visible. This may be due to increased height of the intervertebral disc and decreased spinal curvature. Decreased spinal curvature, I, um, there's, you, from the study, you can't get an indication, but I do wonder if um, that would decrease spinal curvature and scoliosis which would be very promising and would increase height um, even more for those people with scoliosis. Increased spinal height may stretch quadriquana, nerve roots, spinal ligaments, and or paraspinal muscles that's causing back pain and muscles, uh, pain and instruments. The, well, from what these describes here, I think this, these would be quote unquote good side effects. But like I said, inversion ha does have some negative uh, things, um, but these ones I do not think are negative things. So. Stretching of nerve roots, the spinal cord, uh, muscles and ligaments may be responsible for the back pain. Uh, okay, here's the, here's, um, horizontal bed rest gives less, less axial loading than the spine, than horizontal head down tilt bed rest without traction. Okay, here's how they did it. Six healthy male subjects, um, about 38, about average head, about average weight, um, 38 likely skeletal mature. Each group underwent two forms of bed rest for three days. Group one underwent horizontal bed rest followed by six degrees head down tilt and balance traction. At the same time, group two underwent six degrees head down tilt and balance traction followed by horizontal bed rest. Subjects in both groups, groups had a two week recovery period between the two forms of bed rest. Um, they got low friction sheets. I do not know if that actually matters, but here it actually gives the apparatus. Um, you can see here 10% 10, 10 body weight. So I know that there's a 100 kg method going around um, and people do anecdotally report height increase for that, but um, it has never been, from what I've seen, it is validated. 
but um, you know, a high seeker could potentially mimic this um, and also could potentially change um, what percentage of body weight is used. Um, like I said, the 100 kg, but um, you can see the foam rubber traction boots. They explain how to do it, rope, um, low friction satin seats, pulley, um, yeah. So you, someone could potentially do this. Um, it'd be hard to do it for five, five hours that they describe and still function. Um, but you know, I, I wonder if, if they're, um, you could do potentially do a kind of decline sit-ups and maybe attach 10% body weight to the feet somehow and possibly mimic that. So I do wonder if there there's a way to kind of mimic this apparatus in a functional way. Um, yeah, but, um, so here's, here's the apparatus. If anyone has an ideas of, any ideas of how to improve this or kind of make it more functional, yeah, throw, th put it, put it out there in the comments. Balance traction along the spine was obtained by suspending a load corresponding to 5% of the body weight from each leg with a cable pulley system. The load on the cables, which were attached to the boots, counteracted the compressive forces that would act on the spine in this position and prevented the subject from sliding down on the bed. Um, they, they discuss how to do the length measurements, physical examination, intermuscular pressure, torque measurements, but here's what's interesting here. So you can see there, the changes in total body length is greater than the change in disc height. So what they say is that this is due to a decrease in spinal curvature. Why? That there's more height than actual change in disc height. But there is one possibility that that would be very promising in that it actually in, induces articular cartilage endochondral ossification, which would be results in permanent height increase. Now, there's no indication from the study that that happens, um, but it's still it's still pretty promising. Or maybe, yeah. And it's also possible, you know, change in disc height, that maybe this is permanent, um, the change in disc height. So, so yeah. But, um, but even, even temporary height, um, you know, it says, they say here, is, again, it stretches the muscles, it stretches the ligaments, and it has all these kind of beneficial effects. Um, but like I said, it is possible that why that there's more change in, in length than actually change in disc height is due to articular cartilage endochondral ossification. I've talked about this in other papers that this, this happens, but what the scientists actually think is that it's due to a decrease in spinal curvature. Results: Total variation in one day of total variation variation one day of total body length was about twelve millimeters in our subjects. So that's about one centimeter, about um, not quite half an inch, um, but maybe uh, um, yeah. But but still, what one centimeter? That's pretty. That's pretty uh, significant, um, and that would definitely have an impact on proportion, proportionality, especially happening in the torso. Total body length increased significantly more during head down tilt with balance traction, about two centimeters, than during horizontal bed rest, about 1.6 centimeters. So again, if, you, if there, if there was a way to mimic this for sleeping, you know, you could potentially gain 50% more height in the morning than you do normally. Um, Spine, spine length between L5 and C7 increased more during head down tilts with balance traction than during horizontal body rest. Again, about 50, 50, 50 to 100%. About 70% of the disc height increase in both treatments occurred during the first five hours of bed rest. So yeah, this, this would be very, pretty challenging to do five hours. Um, but... The, it, so there may be a way to do it intermittently. So to do it periodically throughout the day, maybe for like 30 seconds um, every hour or yeah, 30 seconds every hour to get some of the, some of the disc height back. Um, 
and potentially to make the apparatus more dynamic. So when you're doing this, it's not very dynamic. So you could potentially add some vibration here to get more fluids, uh, stimulate the disc more. Um, yeah. So it takes five hours because there's no, there's no dynamic movement anywhere in the disc. It's kind of passive movement. There's, it's, there's always dynamic stuff going on, but it's, it's pretty much static. Um, so if you maybe, if you do some kind of decline sit-up, add some vibration, kind of wiggle from side to side, that could, it could increase disc hydration more. And it could possibly have it take less than five hours. Okay, again, total body and spider heights increased more during head down tilt with balance traction than during horizontal bed rests. So in space, um, they, they report typically sometimes four centimeters or more of, of height increase. And that's more than in the study. So the question is, how do we get that four centimeters of height increase? Um, but you know, it, it, this height increase did not, you know, that's tip, it typically takes more than seven days. They said to get that full height increase. And this, this study was not that long. So it's possible if the, if someone did this more, they could potentially get more height. So the question in, in this study is, is how do we shorten the period? Because no one can do five hours. Um, I, because of the side effects of inversion, I don't know if it's possible to do this while you're sleeping. Um, but, but still, is there, the, this begs the question, since it's possible to be more efficient to sleeping than the horizontal bed rest, how do we make sleeping more efficient so we recover more height at night? Um, that's the question. We, we know it's not as efficient as it could be. So how do we make it more efficient? Um, the, this study kind of begs that question. Um, head down tilt with balance traction is a better model than horizontal bed rest to stimulate changes of total body and spine length seen in microgravity. So the study proves that horizontal bed rest is not the best that you can do to increase your total body height and spinal length at night. There's a better way. Uh, again, inversion has some side effects. It's probably not possible to sleep in it, but is there still a way? What, and we, is there, is there a way to find? Um, here they report abdominal pain, back pain, um, headache intensity. This is one of the, the side effects of inversion, um, but it, it could be due to, to other stuff, leg pain intensity, not, not very much, um, the height of the two lumbar just increased about three millimeters with both forms of bed rest. So that they say 35, about 35 or six, six, 60 percent of the total body and spinal lengthening is due to de increased disc height and the remainder is due to reduction of spinal curvature. But what if some of it is due to articular cartilage in the condroosification? That would be absolutely amazing. Um, but it, it, I, have, I mentioned it um, with looking at other papers, articular cartilage endochondral ossification is very slow. But so it wouldn't, this study is, is of a short duration, but it's possible over time that this articular cartilage endochondral ossification could be significant. Greater flattening of the lumbar spine occurred during head down tilt with, with traction than during horizontal bed rest. Here they um, picture the decrease in curvature. Um, and in here, they, they kind of mentioned the syphilitic fluid shift in microgravity causes edema in the upper body. So this is um, one of the negative side effects of inversion that would make sleeping with the apparatus challenging. Um, and they mention um, other side effects here. But the key takeaways of this study are that, you know, Horizontal bed rest is not the best we can do for sleeping in terms of increase of restoring our body height. So how do we make that more efficient? And, you know, there's this apparatus here to pinch and jelly test, but how do we make this more dynamic um, to make the, to decrease the five hour period because five hours, no, no one is going to be able to do, but could we do a minute um, periodically to get, to kind of restore the height throughout the day? 
So those are the, I think, are the two big takeaways. And potentially, the, the third takeaway I have is that, is articular cartilage endocondyl ossification occurring? And could we potentially use that to increase height? I've mentioned in other papers that I've seen that articular cartilage endocondylification has been shown to occur. Um, and yeah, the, the question is, does this induce it? So I think this is a, a very promising paper. I think um, any height seeker who wants to increase height in the torso should definitely look at it. And, um, you know, the question is, can we mimic this apparatus? Can we alter the body, the percent, the weight that's used to increase height more? Can we make it more dynamic? So yeah, leave all your ideas in the comments.